Does my mic sound better from last time? You're good. Well, it's not echoing, so yeah. You know. yeah. I think so, it, I'm gonna blame Windows 10 for that because Windows 10. So anyway, so we're back with uh, more of rock and roll racing. I don't know how lo <laughs> like okay races to run one of ten. All right, so there are ten races that I have to do on top of yeah. It's British Ninja's fault. For what? Let the carnage begin, Manny. Uh, Oh, and I just remembered I got to turn down the volume because some people have a huge problem with it when it comes to audio, you know, certain companies. Anyways. <laughs> they will re be renamed nameless for the purpose of the stream. Nintendo! <laughs> Is Nintendo Japan still on a real copyright strike spree when it comes to this stuff? No, they try, no, Dever, I think I, you probably heard this story before. They tried to pull a fast one on me. I don't I think I've heard that. Okay, so when I, okay, so I record episodes of these streams and I upload them on my second channel called Gold of Fox Stream. And the first episodes uh, that I recorded was Super Mario World and immediately I got a copyright claim from Nintendo because I was using game footage. Now, luckily I was able to fight off with uh, fair use. And of course I had to send an appeal and everything and it went through just fine. But uh, then I did a Kirby's Dreamland, and they pulled a fast one on me. Oh Jesus! I was turning the wrong way. They pulled a fast one on me by claiming a copyright to the audio that I was using, and I can't fight against that. I'm like, you fucking bastards! So um, ever since then, I tried to stream most of the videos mute or the volume turned uh, low enough to where the uh, ID, uh, the content ID system wouldn't pick up on it. Oh fuck! Yeah, that sounds like typical Nintendo Japan. Yeah, no, they try to pull a fast one. It's like, okay, fuckers, I'll do mute. You like that? <laughs> Fuckheads. I'm hoping Nintendo Japan wises up soon. I hope so too. I've been telling. I have been. T I've been sharing this story and telling it over and over again to the point where like everybody would be like, yeah, we get it. Or you're gonna be blown. Ah, I got blown to smithereens. I guess you could say it's like a Texan shower at a hurricane, huh? <laughs> I guess so. Oh fuck! Come on, go, go, go! Inevitable go, and pointless, but hilarious <laughs> sometimes. Good God, I'm getting my ass kicked. God, the first like track section was like a breeze, but God damn. Turned out for what? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna lie. I loved like I still remember during uh, Super Mario World, Ellie would play a bunch of sound clips of um. Of, like, oh, yeah, different from songs. Her, uh, soundboard. Yeah, that was absolutely hilarious. It was a fun reaction we were getting. Yeah, those are fun. I don't get how they work, but they're fun. Yes, I got uh, first place. Yay! That was an aggressive race. Jesus. Yeah, fuck hey, them Dolphin, guys. Have you ever played Sonic and All Stars Racing Transform? <laughs> um, I don't think so. They're actually really fun and kind of skillful. Like, think it's of like. Kind Think of like it's... Mario Kart with all the items actually balanced. Let's see. Like, oh yeah, should we should we show. explain why we're streaming today? Oh yes. Um, well, I, I like at least once a week I do a stream, but on this occasion, um, our friend Mimi or Mim Kage uh, needs a little bit of help with some funding. Um, I'm not going to say too much about that. Uh, it's not really my business to give out the full details. But I will say that she has been going through a couple of real life problems to where um, it's it's been kind of difficult. Really, to say the difficult, least. So, to say the least. Um, oh, how can I put this without being too revealing? You know what? Maybe Solar should do it. Yeah, the mm. boy, Fred. <laughs> what do you want me to say that isn't too revealing? I don't know. Uh, okay, Ask your girlfriend. Long story short, she's having issues with her family, and she wants to move out. And right now, she's got basically nothing to her name to do it. She does have a job, like, that she got, like, two days ago. Yeah, she recently got hired. Good for her. And now she's trying to use this job to save up and move out. But her family is doing their very gosh darn best to slow her down as much as they can. Because oh, they shit. more or less, like, taking advantage of her. So that's yeah. the, that. That is as much detail as I'm gonna go into. Hey, you fell into a pit. Yeah, I know, right? Jesus, this game's not Mario fucking around anymore. God damn, this is becoming but, more yeah. hardcore. This is awesome. 
But yeah, this is a donation. You don't have to do it. Of course, it is very, very much appreciated. If you can't donate, you can always spread the word that, hey, we're streaming for our goat, Minkage. Does amazing artwork. If you haven't checked out her redeeming art, I could ramble on about how amazing she is. I mean, she taught me how to use Psy. She did. Yeah, I know. She did a lot of cool things for us. Like, the first time I was introduced to her art was, like, I've already seen her art when she first did, like, fan art before, and I was immediately impressed with what she did. Uh, one of which is that there was a uh, little comic series that she did when um, she's got, like, a bunch of pair sprites, and one of which is that she was able to have some kind of imitation potion, and she was, um... She was basically impersonating me, and one of which uh, creating the little <laughs> cross dress joke, in which I have to admit that's pretty funny. But I was very impressed with the art that she did, and I just like she was having fun with it. So at one point, I decided to uh, message her, and then at some point, I thought, you know what? If I can pay her, I would love for her to do some thumbnail art. So she's kind of the root of when I started uh, having thumbnail art for my YouTube videos. Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite artwork that she's done, aside from that quiet one I, I asked her to do, because I, I, it's not public. Uh huh. <laughs> it's that chest bursting one. But the besides that one, the, the one of my favorite art pieces she's done, and that was for like uh, on Evan GR's How, How Not to Prom You or uh, podcast, one of the streams. Uh -huh. It was Aeon with the demon wings and all the eyes. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, everybody everybody was in awe when that one came around. That was an epic piece, I love it. Oh yeah, no. I know. I remember seeing that, I was like, holy shit, she did that by herself? Like, them eyes alone would take me, like, all day. <laughs> Jesus like, I Christ. originally did not understand the behind the scenes of the art piece. Originally, I thought that was Aeon, and he was, and he was in his demon form or something, and he was conjuring magic into himself. And no, Aeon... Pull me aside and say, uh, no, actually, that is a soul that ended up in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, You're, oh! Thanks for the boost! You poor, unfortunate soul! It's sad, but true! <laughs> you know, sometimes, I like... don't think that song applies, because Ariel went to Ursula willingly. I don't think the person that pictured did. Oh, yeah, no, I... Don't I... Care. I... <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> trying to cross uh -huh. the throat. Um, no, like, sometimes when it comes to her artwork, like, aside from, you know, the usual cutesy stuff that you would see, she can get really dark with her art. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, no, like, she's working on a series that is, like, I, re I can get behind the analogy that she's aiming for, and it can really go places. It, 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 it knows how to tug your heartstrings. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on. Ugh. The first part of that story tugged, like, hit me in my childhood because I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta oh, love so the F-bombs. <laughs> just so funny how Golden Fox can somehow enhance the mood of a sad story with cursing. Well, that's why, you know, cursing is, uh, it's, a, it's an introductory word. It's a word that you can slap into pretty much anything, and it just enhances the Son meaning. Of a bitch, come on. At Lightning Bliss, why you drew on Golden's head when you sleep on top of him? She, well, you're a fucking liar if you say that you never drool whenever you sleep. I'm gonna say <laughs> that. Okay, okay, I will openly admit in public that when I am this tired, and which is pretty much every night because I'm a workaholic, and I'm in that deep of a sleep. Yeah, I might drool a little bit. Oh, I fucking drool. I, I will fully admit that. If I'm asleep, I fucking, my mouth's fucking it's... open. I'll wake up and like my cheeks stuck to the fucking pillow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I joined the club, Like I dude. said, you're a, you are a fucking liar if you say that you have never drooled in your sleep before. That's Everybody has at one point. Everybody, Everybody has at one point. Exactly. Everybody has fucking done it. And people are like, oh, you drool when you sleep? Like, oh, yeah, I, I suppose you fucking slap a muzzle hey, on yourself before you fall asleep to prevent that, huh? Oh, thank you for the donation! Who was it? Let's see, it's it's from Holly Jens. I don't know who that is. Oh, that's a, that's a hefty donation, fella. I know, right? That's so kind of you. Thank yes, you. Yes, we are helping the goat. The goat gets help. Yes. Because we love our goat. Exactly. You know what? I also had a conversation last night because I was get because I was like really irritable with uh like because of my wonky furry puppets that still need a lot of work. Uh, people are under the assumption that I do not know how to draw hands, and I do. I just don't show it off that often because I don't like drawing humanoids. 
Well, anyway, I was venting about this to Mem, and she said, well, maybe you ought to just make yourself practice and, and prove them wrong. Why don't you post some sketches that you can? You know, and, that's a, that, you know, she does have a point about that. No, she had a point. I just was annoyed because I didn't want to draw humanoids. I don't like drawing humanoids. At that point, I'm just being a baby. I mean, it, I, I don't want to be that guy, but it's not really about what you want. It's about what the consumer wants. So yeah, that's I know. Um, but so I bit my tongue and I told myself, well, what is something I really wanted to draw that is humanoid? Think about it. <sighs> Rainbow Quartz. Ooh, interesting. Oh. And I did. I did oh, a sketch. I, I, a court, there we go. I looked at a reference, obviously, to get it down. But I'm like, holy crap, I could draw. I could draw humanoids. And I actually liked it. I can so draw hands. I want to practice drawing uh, Rainbow Quartz more. And yes, I can draw hands. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. You. Oh, who's ready for our fireworks and hamburgers tomorrow? I am. Yeah. I have to work. I'm ready to wake up not at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, actually, yeah. I, think we're gonna have I know the pain. Tomorrow. I know the pain. I'm actually going to be doing an all nighter because um, the sooner I get it finished, I'm uh, reviewing the movie Top Gun. Ooh. Okay. Like. Okay. I'll put it. I'll tell you this much. Top Gun, it's a stupid summer blockbuster movie that came out in the 80s. It's a very stylish, stupid movie, but fuck, I love it. I love Top Gun. It was my favorite movie for the longest time as a kid. America! Fuck yeah! Frankie. Yeah. Like, I, 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 like, I have this, like, suspicious feeling that some people would be like, Hey, if you want to review a movie for, like, the 4th of July, why don't you review... Born on the 4th of July or Independence Day. And I say that while I get my ass obliterated as soon as the race begins. All right, assholes. You want to go hardball? All right. <laughs> let's 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 dance. Let's dance, motherfuckers. Oh, I love the first Independence Day. Yeah. yeah no, Independence Day, like, I will admit, it's a dumb movie, but... It's not again, dumb. It... Uh, oh, okay. okay, it's kind of dumb. Okay, how about, I was it's about a little like, dumb. Like, it's not dumb. It's like, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. it's Will Smith hey, shooting a down bitch. UFOs in a fighter jet. That's, come on now. Okay, it's a little dumb. But it's a little dumb. The practical effects are awesome. Yeah, yeah. like, it's, it's one of those few movies that, okay. So I know that, you know, this... You know him, Doug Walker. He was saying that the like the late '90s was considered the dark age because they focused too much on the CG. But with Independence Day, there kind of was a bit of creativity with the effects. They use um, they use practical models. effects for the aliens. They used yeah. models. They used actual pyro effects, yeah. like real pyro effects. Personally, pyro like effects. I think the movie does get a little more hate than it needs to be, and I get why people don't like it because it's a typical like alien movie, but. To me, it's more of like an experiment of working with aliens with a modern technology. And personally, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. And it's fine if, you know, you don't care much for Independence Day. That's that's perfectly fine. Because I know that movie is not for everyone. Um, okay, I, don't... I, I, I just thought of a movie that does, a, like, it takes place during the 4th of July. Uh-huh. Mm. And it's a classic. Mm. Jaws. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, there's yeah. actually a pretty good number of movies that can be reviewed for the 4th of July. And this is something that I could keep in mind for the next couple of years. So, Independence Day, Jaws, and uh, there was also um, a movie from Oliver Stone called Born on the 4th of July. I've never seen it, but it has. It stars Tom Cruise. don't think I've heard of that one. There's one other movie I like. It has the 4th of July in it, but it doesn't necessarily focus on it. Uh, mm -hmm. The Sandlot. Oh, yeah! That movie's just a straight up like summer classic. Oh, I love the Sandlot. I need to get that on Blu-ray. <laughs> no, that that movie like it it still has some lines that I'll never forget. Like the scene that I love the most is when I forget <laughs> what the kid's name is, but he's arguing with like uh, one of the competitors to the point yeah. where like it says like where he goes like you play ball like a girl and everybody was like complete silence. Like oh shit. What did you say? <laughs> you, heard you heard me. me. Tomorrow noon. At our field. Count on it, Pete drinking crap face. 
<laughs> oh, that's 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 fucking beautiful. Oh, it's so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also like, the. I'm not um, even offended that they say you play ball like a girl. Like ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, he got into it because uh, one of the rivals said, ah, it's just a bunch of, uh, like, idiotic losers and a fat uh, fat kid. And he took that offensively, like, would you, you say shut crap your mouth, face? Phillips. <laughs> shut your mouth, Phillips. <laughs> would you say crap face? I say you shouldn't even be allowed to touch a baseball. Except for Rodriguez, you are an insult to a team. Come, Come on! on! What challenge you want right now? Come on! Yeah! Quit playing a game with me, Porter. You ain't good enough to lick the dirt off our cleats. Watch it, jerk. Shut up, <laughs> idiot. Moron. Moron. <laughs> Scab eater. <laughs> butt sniffer. I remember when butt was the worst word that you could say. Yeah. Fart smeller. <laughs> Fart smeller, yeah. Uh. You fall for apples in the toilet. And you like it. <laughs> you play ball like a girl. <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and let's not forget, let's not forget the roller coaster scene where they had the chewing tobacco. Oh, idiots. Idiots. <laughs> you fools. You have no idea what you have done. <laughs> like, I will admit, Sandlot, it's a very, st like, stupid kids movie, but goddamn, it's executed in such a way that just, it creates some of the most hysterical fucking moments. I love it. It's like next to the Goonies, it's one of the best kid yeah. movies. No, I, I actually. Hey, you guys! No, yeah, no. I, actually, I definitely enjoy those kind of movies where, like, it stars a group of kids and they're involved in something. And yes, yeah, so that's part of why I enjoyed watching uh, the movie It and uh, watching scenes yeah. from Strange, uh, Stranger Things. And funny enough, that's kind of like. I'm spoiling this uh, review here. Uh, I have school days to upload. I talk about that with the, uh, the, the students and how uh, I got that same vibe. Noise. Yeah. I did not sense that vibe with that, ironically. Huh. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that scene where they're at the sister's castle and they bring the pillows. And I'm just like, oh, my heart. I love it. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I have a bump on my head. It sucks. Yeah, I know. Okay, so Sandlot. Um, like, what other movies, like, would be good for, like, a 4th of July? Like, 90s? Well, it, it could be 90s, it could be 80s, you know. Fuck. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on. That's right, give me that fucking boost. Woo! Come on, come on. There we go. Ooh, more gold. Born to be wild. They're just playing that in the game. Shit. I span out. No, 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 no. Other way, other way, other way. Oh, Jesus Christ. I span so bad that I was, like, going backwards on the track. I think I still have the lead. Oh, damn it. I didn't hit the booster. Fuck. I spun out so bad. It's like I'm going back in time. Gotta go back in time. Oh, yeah. Good movie. Fuck, yeah. No, that's easily one of my favorite movies of all time. Like... Okay, I've, you and Lars would definitely get along, but it's one yeah, of his no. favorite movies. Okay, so some of my favorite movies, Back like, the yeah, no, it can range from the classic summer blockbuster films from the 80s, whether it's, like, Raiders of the Lost Ark or Back to the Future, to movies that can be very in-depth and, like, something a little more meaningful than most people would give a credit for. Like, I don't even know where to start. Um, I think everybody loves Star Wars, um, the original trilogy. Back to the Future yeah. is definitely one of them. Uh, one of my personal favorites, and they're... They're both war movies, um, which can be polarized to an extent. Um, Black Hawk Down and Saving Private Ryan. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, those... I'm never a fan of war films, to be honest, so... I'm gonna be that odd one out. <laughs> nah, you're good, you're good. That, that's, it's perfectly fine. Um, How fucking dare you? I, I, hey, I thought, <laughs> like I'm, okay, hey, okay, hold on. <laughs> I like Major Pain. Major Pain! All right, you're... <laughs> this is acceptable for now. <laughs> okay, I also like, uh, you probably will hate me for this, but I also like Periscope. Down Periscope. I've never yeah. heard of that movie. Oh, it's a comedy. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, Magical Star. Animated movies are definitely on there. Uh, The Secret of Nim, The Land Before Time. Oh, God, don't get me started on The Secret of Nim. What, do you mm. not like that movie, or? 
No, no, I like it. It's just wool, wool boy. I know. I have pet rats and everything. Damn it! <laughs> An animated movies way back then actually had. They were like, fucking hardcore. They actually yeah. had meaning back then. Oh wait, wait, wait! What's this? Hey, we got another uh, donation. Thank you, uh, Mike Lyons. I don't know who that is. I'm just check. I'm checking the notifications through my phone. For some reason, my notifications is not working. Uh, that's weird. But thank you. Thank you so much. You're yeah. awesome. Thank you so much for playing the game. Go is gonna cry when she hears this. Oh, go she... uh, Mimi is gonna be really happy. But yeah, oh, um... actually, she, actually, she is crying. She's crying. We're joining the chat right now. Oh, oh also. Uh, I mean, also that and uh, Finn on his stream is doing the same thing that we are, so... Oh, sweet! Oh, yes! Finn! Hooray for Finn, Finn the Pony! Finn! I'm gonna pause for a minute. Yay! Let's see, what about Watership Down? Oh, fuck yeah, I love Watership Down. I have that movie, I love it. It's like a tale of Moses in a way, except you're funny. It's fucking <laughs> brutal! That movie is it one is of the dark. darkest films I've ever seen. Like, I'm not yeah. just talking about the gore fest that happens in the last act. And trust me when I say that. But um, what they have to do to survive and how much they have to group together. And, like, after they find their home, they realize, oh, shit. Like, we got to figure out a way to keep this Warren, like, active by having some does. And it's well, just... It's, yeah, it's their future. They they, they want to have a future. They need to have, they need to have a family. That's oh, the my only way to... God. Get up that fucking ramp. Christ. But, yeah, no. Um... <laughs> But yeah, no, uh, Watership Down, uh, The Land Before Time, like, every, even today, even when I see that movie, it still makes me ball up in tears. Oh, same, me too. I remember every time I watched that as a kid and the mom would die, I oh, would go fuck, and dude. go hug my mom and, and cry. I'm like, I never want to lose you, mommy. No, it's just, it, it, like, the way that scene executes, that, like, the way that scene is executed, it's, it's the mother where... Like, okay, so the scene begins when you hear Littlefoot calling out, you know, his mother, uh, his mother's name, and it's echoing in the background, so there's a wide scope, and it creates the atmosphere immediately, along with the sad music that James Horner makes. And by the time he approaches her, she, she can't do much. She tries to get up and everything, but she gives words of wisdom to him. So there's so much going on in that scene to where, like, you can sense how scared Littlefoot is and that he has to go on his own. But the words of wisdom that the mother gives, it's just, damn. I, I remember every line. The hell is that noise in the background? I don't know, uh, I hear it too. Someone's watching TV in the background. Um, oh, okay. Up my room. So, other favorite movies. Um, Lion King is the... Sorry, guys, go ahead. You guys, you mentioned Moses, but I'm surprised no one's brought up Prince of Egypt. Yeah. No, uh, Ooh. you can't, yeah, Prince of Egypt and, uh, I, I, I remember Dragon. Prince of Egypt, yeah. yeah. that movie actually made me question God. What? Uh, Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt. <laughs> we were just mentioning that. Yeah, I, I was, I was saying that movie made me question God a little bit. Like, I had to stop the movie, go up to my mom and ask, why would God kill all those kids? And my mom's like, well, unfortunately, that was the only way to make the pharaoh see reason. I'm like, but those kids what? were innocent in all this. She's like, that usually happens in life. That death doesn't favor anybody, no matter how old or young or healthy it's, you are. It's, it's the inevitable. It's really something that, it's not even evil. It's just there to do its job. And when push comes to shove, push comes to shove. Hindsight's 2020 in this case. Yeah, Fuck. but I loved the design of that movie. It's one of those few animations that is no longer done anymore. Yeah, I know. Um, for other like movies that are my favorites, like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna Road to El Dorado. Yeah, um, I'm Definitely. I'm always gonna like be called out silly for saying this, but Lion King is always gonna be like one of my favorite movies, no matter how flawed it gets. Oh, no, it's I don't a classic. Think... Who the fuck? Who the fuck is gonna call you out for liking Lion King? The fuck? That actually, that did happen once on Tumblr. Somebody asked me what my favorite uh, Disney movie is years ago. Oh, it's ago. Tumblr. Ignore them. Yeah. yeah. No, really. Somebody Tumblr. said, that script is all a mess. Like, did you take this from Confused Matthew? And he's like, <laughs> yes. Like, I could call out so much bullshit on what he said about that movie, but I'm not going to bother to talk about it now because that's easily changing the... Um... Yeah. Yeah, it's changing the subject, and I don't want things to go sour. Uh, who... uh, what were we talking about? Um... Male movies. What? No, we're talking about movies. What kind of movies were we talking about? Ah. 
Oh, I was uh, gonna say something about Back to the Future. Favorite movies of childhood, animated or not? Ugh. Um, favorite movies of my childhood. Okay, I got one because I know this movie gets a lot of shit, but I honestly don't know why. I think people really what movie? exaggerate it. I haven't mentioned it yet, but Once oh. Upon a Forest. Once Upon a Forest, there's a bit of a hit and miss here and there. It's basically one of those movies that are uh, based on environmental messages like Fern Gully. But um, I, the idea is just it's it's a movie that's supposed to be uh, the theme in of hope and survival. Yeah. To which it's been done before from the land before time. And I'm not saying that you can't like just because someone does it like in that particular way doesn't mean you can't. You know, it's it's the same thing with having familiar stories. Um, some of the character designs I was not too big of a fan of. And the direction they were going for, like the environmental message, was a little in your face. Yeah. <laughs> I can agree with that. Ugh, but, excuse me. Like, comparatively, I could tolerate watching that movie. Like, there are much, much worse movies that I've seen. I, I, I don't want to say The Last Unicorn because everybody knows why I like that one. But, um. Bible. Uh, America Tale. Uh, Ooh, America Bible. Tale. I like the sequel more personally. The sequel's good. I, I still prefer the first one. The first one was dark and terrifying at the beginning. The weird thing is, is that that's actually why I didn't like that movie. Like, I'm open to movies <laughs> that have dark themes, but that movie, it just got so mean spirited where Fievel is constantly missing his parents, and he, everything he mistaken for his parents is something else. And it just goes on throughout the rest of the film. And I'm just like, I'm not enjoying this. Not even well, somewhere out there was able to, like, lift my spirits up. Uh, see, that lifted my spirits up because it brought about a sense of hope. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, well, like, I'm not uh, gonna, like, I'm not gonna go judging anybody. Like, okay, this is Oh, just... no, 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 we're talking, we're talking. Like, oh, yeah, let, no, no, let me no, explain like, why okay, I like it. No, no, okay, right, go ahead, go ahead. Let me explain why I like it. Um, the reason why I like it is because, yeah, despite the, like, he constantly... There are times where he, he's like, right there, they're just right there. If you just look down or look to the left or the right and they're not there and he, mm. But at the same time, this is a kid. This is a child that came from a completely different country. He's separated from his family. He has to find a way to find them while surviving on his own. With what little help he can get or trust from. And I... That is probably the most admiral, most tough, most one of the strongest characters I've ever seen. Him going through all of these challenges that most adults don't go to and go through in their lifetime. Um. Okay. That's 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 fair on that end. And and the reward towards the end of the movie when he's finally reunited, it's just oh my god, it feels so freaking good. All of that stress all that turmoil all those trials to find his family and he finally does and oh i cry so much when that happens <laughs> uh it just feels all the more rewarding you know after everything he went through that he never gave up no fair enough like some people can perceive it as that people perceive things in different ways um that's why, like, whenever there's those, like, people who have unpopular opinions, I'm open to listening to them. Um, as long as they don't shove it into your face so hard that they try dictating your likings of something. And that's something yeah, yeah. That, that, that's something which Confused Matthew kind of did when he reviewed The Lion King, saying that he said this, and I quote, This movie does not deserve any of the success or accolades it's received. It deserves to be ignored. Moreover, it should be ignored. And that irritated the fuck out of me. I would just counter-argue that that's your opinion. I happily disagree. I would like evidence to support his opinion, at least, but I didn't watch it. I, he kind of sounds a little mean-spirited in the review. Oh, yeah, no. He, he complained saying that, uh, that Simba's just a little asshole who is compared to Draco Malfoy to that kid from uh, Game of Thrones. And I'm just like, dude, you are, you are over-exaggerating. And he brings that up saying, no. I am not exaggerating. He's like, uh, yeah, you are. I can. Yeah, I'm talking about him. Okay, uh, we got a question here. Uh, who uh -huh. remembers the rescuers? Yes, I remember the rescuers and Down Under. And I Down Under, both. yes. I love both. The first one, 
The first one made me cry. Holy crap. It did, huh? Uh, yeah, the, the villain, what's her name? Uh, well, you know who I mean. What's um, her name? <laughs> <laughs> Suction cup man! <laughs> Penny, don't you like it here? A big, beautiful boat all to yourself. But if I don't get back to the orphanage, I'll never be adopted. Adopted? What makes you think anybody would want a pathetic little girl like you? Bitch! You are a bitch, cunt, bitch, cunt, bitch, bitch, bitch. Well, there's that too. You are a cunt, 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 <laughs> big fat stupid cunt. Exactly. It's just like, how can you say that to a child, you monster? I know, right? I'm just like... Yeah, you know, if I, like, if at one point I ever review that movie, I will play that song. I don't care if it gets demonetized or has that advertiser-friendly shit going on. It will be worth it. Of the two villains, villains, of the two villains from those two films, who would be considered the worst? Uh, What's-her-face or the, the poacher? The poacher was badass. I'm not gonna lie. He was terrifying. He was he... Old, he would plan strategies to like manipulate um Cody. No, well, we were that, talking about but, the rescuers. Um, he actually was gonna kill Cody at the end. I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. He was he was gonna kill Cody. Unlike uh oh, I think her name is Medusa. Also, guess who voiced the poacher? George C. fucking Scott. Damn. Ooh. Yeah, it was one of his last roles before he died. Oh. Medusa actually wasn't going to kill Penny. I mean, yeah, she used no, Penny he... like a slave, but yeah. she held her at gunpoint, but she wasn't going to kill them. Um, but the, the poacher, he was going to kill Cody. Yeah, no, like, those movies can go places. You know, I, you know, some people give shit to the first Rescuers. I'm just thinking, you know, you got to admit, you know, in the 70s when Disney would be known for its, you know, their classic era of fantasy and everything, that was one of the few movies that took steps into, like, something a little more down-to-earth where somebody pointed a gun at someone. Like, you don't see that happen, like, in other Disney movies. With the exception of Robin Hood when, um, I forgot what his name was, but he was pointing a dagger at, uh, King, um, um... It's King Richard, wasn't it? King, King Richard, well, no, that, yeah. No. No. No, no, not King Richard. Long um, live King Richard. King Richard was the good king. You mean Prince King Prince John? That's what it was. Prince John. Oh, yeah. Prince yeah, he John. had yep, a dagger yep, towards his go. back saying, "Release Robin." Yeah, no, like I could say that those movies went places. Um, oh, well, you, I remember me and Doc got had a conversation about villains uh, with Tarek and whatnot. Prince John was. He was such a, a brat. He was a very evil brat. It wasn't even so, he, that he was such a brat. So first he wanted to be rich and wealthy, and that's how it started with him taking everything from the poor. But then, towards it all, he wanted to steal and take from the poor, not to be rich and wealthy, but because he wanted to give back at Robin. And by the end of it all, he had all this money. He was surrounded by gold, and he was still not happy because Robin was still out there. And he hated it, and that it wasn't enough to make the peasants suffer. He had he wanted to make Robin suffer too, and that's what made him such a horrible, scheming well, and, villain. Like, what makes he's it a even, great villain to hate. What makes it worse is that in order to try to get to Robin, he would have a plan to hang Friar Tuck. I'm like, why would you hate the priest, you asshole? Okay, I'm yeah, an atheist, but even I think that's a fucked man up. Of God. Yeah, Hanging no a man of God. That's awful. It is god awful, and I'm and I don't I'm not even labeled as religious. Well, I'm not. I am religious, no, but I don't like, have a label. I'm, an, I'm so. pretty. I'm like I'm on the line between agnostic and atheist. But even then, like Jesus, dude, what next? Do you want to try to like assassinate the Pope? Like fuck, man. What is wrong with you? But yeah, he was a, he was a bad guy. He was a bad bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> but, but here's one villain that never got his just dues, and it didn't dawn on me till we had this conversation. Hmm. That that man from Pinocchio who the turned coachman. all the boys into donkeys. Yeah, yeah no, the coach. He okay. never was captured. I am gonna say this much: a lot of people like say that Chernabog or Scar, or, like they they mention a lot of other uh, villains that are like considered the you know the bad guys. The poacher, you don't fuck with the poacher. Mm, he gets away nope. with shit. And it's like a lot of people undermine that when it comes to countdowns of villains or underrated villains. Like this guy was like, he planned a strategy in the most 
fucked up way possible and got off scot free. Oof. Yeah. Wait, poacher, you mean from the rescuers? No, I'm sorry, I meant the coachman. Coachman, okay, I heard okay. poacher. Okay, poacher and coachman, I get, you know, I get mixed up between those two for some odd reason. Okay, so yeah, the coachman kidnapped all these boys, turned, turned them, them into, into donkeys, donkeys on the, uh, and sold island. them. Yeah. Sold them. Jesus, like. And he was never caught. We never know what happens to him. All those boys are being sold into a mining coal facility. Which, by the way, is, is pretty fucking deadly. Yeah. Even if the, even if the fucking shit doesn't cave in on you, you're breathing in all that fucking coal dust, and that's gonna fuck up your lungs for oh, ever. Jesus. So, so yeah. You know, yeah. Basically, no, that working is in the mines is a fucking death sentence. So there you go. I love what the chat says. Evil! Oh, fuck. Evil! Evil! Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, crap. I got my ass kicked. Ah, uh, damn. We went places in this conversation. This is fun. I know. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, no. Um... I mean, it like, this is, like, I don't know why, but I seem to enjoy, like, okay, I remember the last time I was doing rock and roll racing, we had conversations that went places. That, like, it, I don't know what it is, but it always happens with rock and roll racing. It gets personal. I don't know why. Rock and yeah. roll racing? What? That's, that's the, the game, the game that we're playing. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's, know, what we've been, that's what we've been on for the past we playing. I thought we were still talking movies, though. We no, are, but we, he's just yeah, saying we, whenever he's playing this game, our conversations go places. Just, yeah. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Get it now. Hey, you know the place it really needs to go? Uh, first place. I'm already in first place. So yeah, he's in high. first place. Ask Golden, did you ever play Top Gear on the SNES? Um, the only Top Gear game that I have played was Top Gear Rally and Top Gear Overdrive on the N64. <laughs> yeah. Ever see Basil the Great Mass Detective? Yeah, no, uh, Great Mass Detective. Can't go wrong with that. Also, I love oh, Radican. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, oh, Radican. Who doesn't love Radican? Radican. <laughs> I mean, he's, I mean, is any he voiced by Vincent Price? E I yes. think so? Yeah. Yeah. All right again, all right again, all right again. great mastermind of all time. <laughs> oh my dear Bartholomew, I also love. I'm afraid you've gone and upset me. Shit! You knew what happens when somebody upsets me. No, boss, he good. didn't mean it. He didn't. I love that the uh, like the other like sidekicks are like, no, no, don't, don't, because and they actually feel sorry for anybody who starts trouble with Radican. It's like, that shows how menacing this fucker is. I love that. Uh, it, it's terrifying. And the fact that he's... You can tell he's insane. Yeah. I mean, granted, he, he's definitely intelligent. He's not an idiot, but he's oh, yeah. also insane. Holy crap. Not to, like I also want to point out that within that movie, I love the fight scene between uh, him and Basil when they're on top of the clock tower. There's one moment where he takes a hit... And it actually, like, the way the actor was acting when he took a hit, is like, Gah! it's like, God, yeah, I, damn, I actually that's kinda, brutal. I, I actually kind of cringed at the sight of him getting smacked in the spine with those claws. Oh, God, I'm like, ooh, that's going to hurt. Yeah, I know, right? Ah! God yeah. damn, that was a brutal fight. I, yeah, no, like, uh, I, I love the way how the fight went, too. It wasn't just, like, a brawl. He, like, fucking Basil was, he was actually inside trying to... Yeah, no. He was trying to actually outsmart him, and because that's what I—that's that, what I like. It's like, oh yeah, you see this really fucking tiny dude fighting this really huge dude. He's not gonna fucking overpower him, so he has to. Well, fucking the thing play is, smart. it started out as a battle of wits in the clock tower, and then Radigan realized that he was gonna lose, so he threw out—he threw out intellect and went for ballistic animal instinct, and by that point, Basil had no chance. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I liked. No, Rat no, like, versus mouse. There is no chance. The mouse is screwed. That's if not even for that clock tower. That's, that's not even mentioning that inside the clock tower, like he had to save uh, the little girl from getting crushed. Like, god damn. Oh yeah. Holy no. crap. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah. 
I'm like biting my nails at that scene. <laughs> See, I I would I'm not saying that Disney hasn't been doing this, but I love it when Disney takes some risk in some movies. Like um to give another example, um I liked in Zootopia when it showed uh who the real culprit is. And the way this scene plays out, she was gonna like uh, I forgot what her name is, but she was gonna um she was gonna like try to set up oh. an uh, um set up um set up an act where after shooting um after taking care of um a Nick Wilde and setting everything up like it's another savage uh, situation to create another cover up like yeah. that's like could you imagine how many times she's probably done that with other people at this point. We, we, well, she we clearly has done it to plate. several animals, and yeah, again, this was a conversation me and Doc and Tara had, and this this person was willing to endanger the lives of not just adults but children to yeah. prove a point that predators are inferior and do not deserve to be in association with herbivores. That's just and, yeah, just yeah say, no, it's, it's just about Zootopia. Yeah, we're yeah. talking about Zootopia. It's it's despicable and big. I thinking. think people really harp on it too much, like the cliches. Oh, twist film. I'm like, dude, did you actually? That's see part of why I love crap? that movie. I, it's it's a buddy cop movie for kids. And plus, oh, yeah. you gotta look at what they actually did with that stuff. Like, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of obvious about what it did, but when you think about the implication of what you did, it's still brilliant. It's not. It's like it's not yeah. like the cliche being there. It's how they did it, which is why Zootopia is so awesome. Thank you. No, people said that the, the whole. Here's what I say. Uh, writing is like a car. It, you have the parts, but you actually have to install them right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Two of my favorite parts from that movie is obviously the DMC or the DM. What do you call it? The DMV. The one. With, yeah, yeah, the, the one with sauce. Oh yes. my god, I was tearing my skin out. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no. It's like... the, by the way, I just need to say Zootopia is like my favorite movie of all time. Okay. But in the other that scene the other with the DMV, the... it's like, ha, huh, just like the actual DMV. <laughs> no fucking yeah. lie. When I no went to lie. go, <laughs> when I, I went to there. go get my fucking Texas driver's license, that shit. You were there for three hours, weren't you? I, I was in there. There were like maybe fucking eight people. It took like three fucking hours for me to I go. I called get... it three hours. <laughs> For three, for me to go get my fucking shit, get the fucking paper, and be like, yeah, here's my fucking proof of identity, all that shit, and then go out and take a 15 minute fucking test. Yeah. It's like That's there's right. eight fucking people. The hell, like what? I, I love the other part of, though that I really loved about the movie is the part where, like, yeah, the city is going crazy. Everybody's afraid of predators. Predators are nervous, and gazelle hosts a peaceful protest to remind Zootopia of why we all need to celebrate our differences and get along with one another. Yeah. And you I, can't I do love that, that now line. because apparently that's cultural appropriation. Or yeah. Whatever the you know what I freaking hate now? though? When people what? say like, oh, telling about the, acknowledging your flaws like that is bad though. Um, how is that bad? Acknowledging your flaws helps you identify what you need to do to improve yourself. Yeah, exactly. The fuck? Acknowledging our differences is a good thing, and that's what makes us unique and special. It's like Acknowledging I, your flaws is better than pretending it's like they I don't say, exist. Oh, I know I'm X and X. It's not saying I'm, I'm like, defining myself by that. It's just saying, hey, I have this part of myself that I have to work with, and I'm proud of that because it helps me be me, too. There you go, yeah. There no, you go. It's the same thing with, you know, when it comes to racism or any, like, like I've met, we've talked about this before. I'm fine with anybody who's a part of any race, as long as you're not an asshole. That's really it. I say this, courtesy is given, respect is earned. Mm -hmm. I... <sighs> no, I believe you should respect people from the very get-go and that they have to earn a reason not to be respected. Well, that's why I say courtesy. Yeah. Okay. That. Okay. I can see where you're going. At okay. With that. That's fair. Common courtesy. Okay. That's fair. And I try to. I try to respect everyone, whether we're stranger or not. But yeah. Well, obviously, I'm not perfect. And if you cross the line with me, or if or if you cross the line with anybody else, you know, yeah, there is such thing as not earning respect. Yeah. Because you burn bridges. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. called uh, being a fuckhead. <laughs> <laughs> is true 
it's so yeah easy. Um, are there like you know since we're still talking about movies hi kikio hello <laughs> hey since we're still talking about movies see, are there she's any been here for about 15 minutes <laughs> oh shit yeah. It's okay. So anyway, uh, since we're still talking about movies, is there uh, any particular uh, titles that you guys have like a different opinion on, like movies that you like but everybody else hates, and you know, vice versa? Matilda or Let the Last me... Action Hero? Ooh, Matilda. Last... Or, Jura or or Jaws 3D? Uh, I haven't seen Jaws 3D. I already mentioned the uh, Once Upon a Forest. Yeah. Is that like the only movie, or is there like anything else? I'm trying to think. I'm playing League at the same time. I'm, I'm I, I am also trying to think. Yeah. So Jaws 3D. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. The graphics are god freaking awful. Oh, I'll. I, I, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> but oh, yeah. if you can get past that, I love the plot. I love the characters. I love the idea of a giant killer shark running loose in an open lagoon Sea World park. <laughs> It's just freaking awesome! Jesus Christ. God you know, damn it, now that you mentioned Jaws 3D, I want to say, uh, uh, I'm going to counter that with my own 3D movie, uh, Spy Kids 3D, game over. <laughs> I heard the music. I haven't seen Spy Kids 3 yet, so I can't really, um, like, identify with that one, but, um, I have seen the first movie. So. It, it was Ready Player One before Ready Player One, basically. Damn. It, it, it was Ready Player One, but without, like, all the franchises and shit. Basically, the whole plot to it is that fucking, you know, Junie is, like, trying to live a normal life. And he gets called back into his fucking little government agency because his sister, who still works with the, uh, with the government, gets, like... Basically, there's this new popular video game that's fucking out. And when kids play it, they are unable to, like, <laughs> they are unable to pay attention to anything else, even, like, when people try and fucking talk to them. I don't know, it was a, re it was a really fucking shallow reason, so they sent his sister into the game to figure out what the fuck was causing this. She ends up going missing, so they send in Junie after her, and basically he has to go through the fucking game all the way to the end to figure out why this is happening. So... Yeah, it, it gets in, it gets increasingly like more and more fucking out there the further that he progresses. I need to say that, that it's one of the worst examples of trying to force in your 3D. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, like, like, yeah, no, like it, like it says 3D in the title, and they were maybe like two or three scenes that actually would have been better in 3D, but that's about it. Because I remember, I, I remember there was one where like the main quote unquote bad guy was like about to push a button and it like zooms in on his finger, <laughs> like as he's about to push the button, and then there's like they're fucking they're they're surfing on lava, which is you know that's 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 so badass. <laughs> they're surfing on lava. That's a thing that they're doing. And then there's a <laughs> lava monster, <laughs> and he throws a fucking he throws like a lava ball at them. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much, uh, actually, yeah, there's one more. There's, like, they're, they're, like, fighting a bunch of giant robots, and one of them fucking, like, reaches towards the camera. That's basically all the, all the scenes that would have been better in 3D, so, you know. And then he crushes the camera? No. Hi, uh, hi, Master Code. Hi, MC. Hello. 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 They had Hello. Elijah Wood in that movie for, for a grand total of about five N not even five, like two minutes. <laughs> he literally no fucking. Okay, so so one of the big plot hooks to this fucking game is that everybody that's in the game with Junie thinks that Junie is quote unquote the guy, which is like this god level character in the game that's like, like basically he has the most experience and all that shit. So throughout the entire movie, they fucking sit there and they're all like, right, uh, blast it out to the next race. Yeah, so throughout the entire movie, they're just like, oh yeah, fucking, this this dude is the guy. He'll lead us to victory and all that shit. And then towards the very fucking end of the game, Elijah fucking Wood just teleports in. He's like, I'm the guy. Step and, then he, 
And then he wa- fucking, yeah, he walks into a door and then he gets fucking destroyed instantly. Like, he gets disintegrated by lightning. It's fucking He loses hilarious. all 99 lives. 99 fucking lives. Yeah, no, Junie went through the entire movie with, like, five. He loses 99 lives in, like, three fucking seconds. Damn. <laughs> All right, so since I'm, so yeah. since I'm coming to the next race, I'm gonna go ahead and call this an episode and take a break, and then I'm gonna go to the next one.